So I'm going to begin by asking you, uh, Barkad, what it was initially attracted you to getting involved in this project? Well, I thought it was a, um, a really important story that um, needed to be, to be told. Um, you know, I, I wasn't um, aware of this situation. Um, you know, it's almost kind of kept secret <laughs> in a way. So, um, you know, so it, I thought it was a very necessary story and one that needed be, to be told. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, there's no, there's, there's always great to make films that are, can be escapism or films that don't necessarily have much meaning. But is there something quite, is it always something quite nice as an actor when you know you are involved in a project that does have that undercurrent of importance? Because I mean, this film does feel like it is telling such a, an important story. Oh, definitely. It's, it is, um, it is, it gives you that extra um, reasoning. Um, to do a movie um, that you know, it's it's more important story than just an entertainment. Adja is um, she's brilliant in this film. I mean, she's absolutely terrific. What would she like to to work with in the scenes that you guys shoot together? Because she, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it feels like a real kind of breakthrough performance from her in this in this movie. She was amazing, you know, and she's just a wonderful uh, actress and um, a good person, you know. I. I got to know her during that movie and I thought she was just, um, she was really wonderful. And her performance, just like you said, it is just uh, magnificent. And, um, you know, her Somali is also, was really good. I was truly surprised by um, her Somali more than anything, you know, and, you know, I thought, you know, she nailed it most definitely, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, I was wondering, I mean, obviously the film, it shows quite, well, obviously quite a difficult time in Mogadishu. I was wondering if things, if you know, are they, are they better now than they, than what we see in the kind of movie? I mean, because obviously the, the real life woman, she's been trying to campaign for change. Do you think that that's had a, a big effect on, on the real world? And do you think things have progressed in, in a good way? I believe so. You know, I mean, uh, Mogadishu is getting better and... Um... Overall, this story, you know, it's getting um, more attention now more than ever. And, you know, um, there was few people that was talking about it outside of Somalia, you know, in the Western world. And I think Efra, the effect that she had, that the fact that she's going back and actually going to the ground and, you know, fighting the FGM, you know, uh, be the voice, not the victim. Um, it's, it's just, you know, she's, that changed a lot. And, you know, I think she did a wonderful job and she's still doing it. I give her props for that. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, as, as, a, as a Somalian, how important is it to have, a re I mean, because obviously Ifra Ahmed is a, a phenomenal woman. How important is it to have these sort of portrayals and this positive representation of, of Somalians in, in kind of in, a, in mainstream kind of movies? Because as, as, as amazing a film as Captain Phillips is and was, and obviously as a great a character it was you played, is it quite nice to get away from the, 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 the pirates and actually focus on, on someone so, so positive as well? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. You know, the Pirates is a story uh, and um, Captain Phillips is a, a different kind of story, but, you know, this is um, also a real person, but, you know, that's that's the thing in life, you know, um, every person have their own journey and, you know, and this a uh, different situation. It's um, a person that's doing positive things and, you know, even though a lot of things, bad things happen to her, you know, she managed to overcome that and, you know, um, fight it and try to, you know, be the positive image and, you know, basically what she's doing, you know, it's, it's really, it's really good. I mean, the scenes at the start of the movie in Mogadishu are pretty brutal, some of the, the moments that we see. I was, I was wondering, because I know you left uh, there very young. I think we, I was reading some of that you were maybe only sort of seven, but do you have any kind of recollections of, of, of the kind of war and stuff from, from your childhood? Of course I do. It was, it was really bad. It was really bad, you know. Um, in Mogadishu, when I was leaving it, it was, it was really bad, you know. Um, uh, murder, rape, um, shots never stopping all that stuff was happening you know but right now Mogadishu is much better and you know um you know the government you know I mean it's a lot of diaspora going back and it's basically we're trying to change that um 
uh, vision and um, a picture of Mogadishu that was once um, really bad. Um, now we're in the process of trying to change that and show a different kind of Mogadishu. And Ifra is definitely one of the characters um, that's, you know, in the front line of doing that in home on field. And so, yes. Yeah. And do, do, do you ever get the chance to travel back uh, to, to 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 back to to Mogadishu or to Yemen or anything of it. Over, obviously, not this year. This year, no, barely anyone's been able to travel. But yes. just generally, over the last few years, do you, are you someone that thinks often about um, about traveling and going back and seeing places that you were you you were raised and brought up in? Definitely, definitely. That's always been in my mind. I went back 2015 and with Adesso, and we visit a few parts of Somalia. We did not go to Mogadishu, however, but you know, Mogadishu is my birthplace and you know, some place that I always and will forever love dearly. And hopefully inshallah, one day I will go back and looking forward to that. Yeah. And I was, I remember, because at the time, when obviously when you broke through with uh, Captain Phillips, I remember at the time a lot of the interviews uh, that you did were kind of generated by uh, the theme of everyone asking you, oh my God, how much has your life changed? Or how, how big, a, how, how much has kind of changed as a result of making this movie and stuff? I was just wondering now a few years have gone by, is it, does this now feel normal? Like just, you know, because I guess, I guess back then when you were at the Oscars and you were doing interviews, yeah. there was a sense of kind of like, wow, this is quite a different thing that's happened to me but now it's been a few years does this now feel like the normal for you or is it does it still feel a bit surreal i mean it would never feel normal <laughs> <laughs> to be honest you know i i just like to be normal you know i i love filmmaking and it's my passion it's my job and it's something that i enjoy doing but you know it's you know from time to time i forget <laughs> and someone stops me and i'm like oh <laughs> You know, so it is uh, surreal, you know, um, a lot of ways. And I'm, I'm really grateful, you know, by all, all the love that I get. Um, so, you know, it's it's kind of confusing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I guess as, as first um, kind of uh, collaborators go, Tom Hanks, I mean, did you, because <laughs> I've been lucky enough to interview him a couple of years ago and he was just as amazing as I always hoped he would be. But do you, yeah. do you still think about when you're making movies now, do you still, are there still things that you learn from watching him in action that you still carry with you today? Of course, you know, how he takes um, each scene like his last and, you know, how much effort he does, he put into it, no matter what scene it is and no matter how many takes it is. You know, he stops like that. You know, I take from him. Because I mean, that last scene in Captain Phillips when he breaks down and starts crying yeah. is one yeah. of the most incredible scenes. I, do you remember when you first saw that scene? Because I guess obviously that wouldn't have been a day that you were on set. So I did. Do you remember when you first sat down and watched it and saw that scene? Did you remember feeling quite affected as well? I was actually on set that day. Oh, and, cool. and that scene wasn't even part of the movie. It was. Um, it was something that him and Paul Greengrass just decided to do at that moment because at first it was the scene that it was just me and him, um, my character and his character, you know, um, him being saved and I'm going to prison. You know, we kind of passed by each other in the hall of the a Navy ship. That's how the scene was to begin with, that's in the script. But you know, Paul Greengrass um, find out that that never happens. You know, the prisoner and, you know, the, you know, the person that got saved don't see each other inside the Navy ships. That does not happen. So, you know, there's something they improvised and they did it right away. So, you know, I, I was actually, um, I kind of talked to the nurse lady a um, little bit trying to convince her because she was a real nurse. She wasn't an actress and trying to calm her down. And I thought she did a wonderful job, but that, so I seen that scene at first hand and I thought it was just unbelievable. Yeah. Like you I said. only found out recently that you improvised the um, look at me, I'm the captain now line. Cause that's iconic that moment now. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's, I still don't remember when I said that line. <laughs> <laughs> 
But um, as, as good, I mean, I love, obviously, as you can tell from the fact I'm talking about it, I love that movie, but I still, my favourite film of yours uh, is still Good Time. Do you remember watching that back? Because that is, that's one of those movies, I mean, you have to kind of watch it like that sometimes. Because you know? that, that's, and have you seen their next film after that? Did you see Uncut Gems? Yes, I did. I did. The Safety Brothers. Um, yes. Yeah, that movie was was really well, you know, even, even though it was, it was brutally cold, we shot in New York and it was just, so called <laughs> one who's doing it, but the movie was just it came out really, really well. I I just you know, just like you said, it was just really incredible. And Uncut Gem as well is it was one of a kind. Uh, I love that movie as well. I thought it deserved it or not for the Oscars. Sorry they didn't get it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Um <laughs> So my final question really is just wondering, because I was looking at what you've got coming up and is it beneath a sea of lights that's really interesting? What, what can you tell, tell me about that one? Is that all kind of completed? That one is completed. I was actually, um, yesterday was the premiere for it on Showtime. Um, so basically that story is about a, a Somali billboard in Dubai that, um, you know, he gets attached to the stuff that's on his billboard and, you know, he, he trying to see a taste of that, basically, you know, and, you know, he, he goes to the wrong line and, you know, somewhat realize what's right. So, you know, it was a really good movie, um, you know, it was done by Neil Kumar and we shot in Dubai and it shows a different side of Dubai and, the lifestyle that, you know, a different lifestyle than people see in Dubai, not the glamorous side, but the other side, the old Dubai, you know, and, you know, it's, it's really touching story. Yeah, I'm, I'm really I was going to say, if, um, if it was cold shooting a uh, good time in New York, it must have been pretty hot <laughs> it's definitely pretty hot <laughs> um so just before i leave before i go just what so what's coming up have you got much lined up next year i know obviously the whole industry has been a bit funny so i think lots of projects have been paused yeah. or shelved but how's 2021 looking for you it's actually 2021 is looking good i mean i have that movie coming out that i shot um you know a few years back and also another movie called uh tyson's run that i shot in um in Atlanta, that's also coming out in, uh, I think, March. So, and that one, I have another a character in there, and I'm a trainer. And that story is about an autistic kid, um, and his family are, you know, just going through their marriage. And, you know, um, I, uh, I, I play uh, a former runner. So um, me and the kid have some sort of a uh, relationship and I become his coach. And, you know, through that, you know, the, the family come back together and their marriage um, becoming stronger. So it was, it's, it's really, um, a really a touching story. Um, it's written and directed by Kim Bass. Um, he's a good director, you know, he wrote it, um, Sister, Sister and uh, a few other TV shows. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. Uh, I'm really excited about it, you know, and it should be actually coming out on theaters sometime in March. Oh, cool. Oh, it'll be good to see it on the big screen. Well, anyway, thank you so much for your time today, Barkat. It's been a pleasure chatting to you and good luck with everything you've got coming out as well. Thank you. Thank cool. you for having me. No worries, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!